Hi everyone, I'm Mark Walker and welcome back to Switch Up. Continuing our 12 days of Switch Up videos, today we're going to have a look at the best first person shooters. They're all really good, but I will be ranking them for a bit of fun. And it's worth noting that some omissions are here, things like Alien Isolation, which I wouldn't describe as a first person shooter, I'd put that in as a survival horror. As I am the first person shooter fanatic, I'm flying solo on this one. And in case you missed it, remember we're giving away two Nintendo Switch OLED consoles to two lucky subscribers, and we'll be announcing those on Christmas Day. If you've used our code SWITCHUP at our website, you'll be automatically entered into a side draw. And remember, we do have the US region on there now as well, so you can all get your eShop cards and save a bit of money. With all that waffle out the way, what are the best 10 Nintendo Switch first-person shooters? Well, let's find out. First up then we've got developer Techland's first entry on the list and it's Call of Juarez Gunslinger. This one features the retelling of stories from Silas Greaves who is a bounty hunter in the American West and it's all set in the 19th century. It's quite a linear first person shooter and you're awarded points for every kill you make. There's dual wielding of different pistols, long guns and I believe if I remember correctly the Nintendo Switch version has those lovely gyroscopic controls for precise aiming. There are a number of skills which you'll unlock which aid in your gun slinging as well as slow down mechanics but once you've completed the game you actually unlock a new game plus mode which is always nice and it allows you to carry all those unlocked skills over to a new run. What was always best about the Call of Juarez games for me were those awesome jewels, and they've remained. You'll be trying to quick draw your pistol out to get the kill before the other person, and it kind of makes me want some kind of sequel in this series. Feels like an up-to-date version would be really nice. Call of Juarez is usually on sale if you're interested in checking it out. It's one to stick on your wish list. Then we've got Bullet Storm Duke of Switch Edition. Now the original Bullet Storm came out in 2011 and that was for Windows and the humble Xbox. As the title suggests, you can choose to play as Duke Nukem. They actually rewrote all the lines of dialogue, but it's a bit odd, like it's a bit strange. Whereas there'll be a player dying on screen and your character should look very, very sad or say something emotional. He says something like, Hail to the King, baby. And that's just a bit odd. The unique hook here as far as weapons go, no pun intended, is the energy leash which allows you to pull players towards yourself. It feels a little bit like the one you have in the new Halo Infinite. Now one negative about the Switch version is it didn't carry the online multiplayer aspects of some of the other ones which is a bit of a shame but let's be honest the Switch Online infrastructure at least is a little bit garbage. It's not the most original of first person shooters but all of its mechanics are solid enough that you can have a lot of enjoyment here. I can't remember if it has gyro controls I'm gonna have to go back and watch my video I will just cheat and slot in Duke Nukem 3d with this one as well just with that Duke Nukem crossover you've got to have Duke Nukem in here somewhere next up then we've got the Wolfenstein games well Wolfenstein 2 at least on Switch. This has won loads of awards. As the first game it features BJ Blazkowicz. I've said that completely wrong I know. And it has some really horrible villains. One thing this one does really well actually a bit like another one on this list is first person storytelling. So some of the cutscenes will be from that first person perspective and others will be from a different perspective but it really does tell a nice story. Well, not a nice story, a horrible one, but one that's compelling enough to make the hours of absolute bloody carnage feel a little bit more motivated. I mean, whenever you throw a bunch of Nazis at a player, there's a lot of motivation there anyway, but I thought it was uh, really quite compelling, this one. One note of warning, I guess, is that it has a download size of 21.9 gigs. So it's a bit of a monster. You've got to make sure you've got a decent SD card. Then we've got Metro Redux. This includes Metro 2033 Redux and Metro Last Light Redux. You play as Artyom, who is born and raised underground. The world's basically overrun by hideous, mutated monstrosities, and you'll spend the vast majority of your time in the Moscow Metro, trying to run missions and gradually play out the story of Artyom. Now, this full version includes both the campaigns as well as all the DLC, and it caters for different playstyles. Your guns can be modified, you've got things like silencers, you can use gyroscopic aim, Aiming. you can do silent takedowns you can throw knives this is like my perfect type of first person shooter honestly i absolutely love stealth in games but they also included the uh, ranger mode which most people haven't tried it, it gets rid of the hud the ui it makes the combat much tougher and it's just a great challenge if you if you do enjoy this style of play this one's got a 6.3 gigabyte download so it's much more reasonable and it's another one that often goes on sale
Then we've got the online centric Overwatch Legendary Edition. Now I know we've got the sequel coming up, but this is still a really good game. It comes from Blizzard, who have had their fair share of ups and downs, but I think this was probably one of their ups. It's a tactics based, well, huh, you'd think it was a tactics based shooter. It should be a tactics based shooter with different classes, but sometimes it turns into a bit of a free for all. But the Switch version is actually very solid. If you're after something that potentially requires a lot more teamwork, and if you've got a group of mates, then this is probably the way to go on this list. This pack does include a few skins and other bits and bobs that I don't care about, and it has a download size of 14 gigs. What I'm going to do is throw in an alternate online shooter here as well, and that's Apex Legends. Now this started out a complete disaster as far as performance goes, but they've worked on it continuously, and most recently it was actually quite nice to play on Switch. So yeah, if you're after one that's completely free and you fancy a bit of online play, then check out Apex Legends. That's 24 gigs. Coming in at number five then, we've got the Borderlands games. There's Borderlands, there's the Handsome Collection, there's Borderlands 2, there's the Game of the, the Year Edition, there's the Legendary Collection. I mean, take your pick. They're all very good games. Borderlands 2, obviously, well, not obviously, but I, I personally think that's the best in the series. And they all focus heavily on co-op play with friends online, if you can find friends online, or go and join our Discord and find some people that are playing it there. Borderlands 2, though, had probably the best feeling, which being Handsome Jack. And the beauty of Borderlands were the sheer a quantity of gun types you could find. You could kill a little peon and get the most amazing gun and there was a certain competitiveness I guess about finding the most awesome little weapon to use. You also because of this often change your play style so you'll get one that's really lethal up close only to five minutes later get an amazing sniper rifle. Obviously the classes affect what's best to use and you've got different skills but man the Borderlands games are awesome and I won't have a bad word said about Claptrap Glenn. <laughs> In at number four then, we have Techland's next game on this list, and it's the recently released Dying Light. This was a seriously impressive port. I guess you could argue that this isn't a first person shooter per se, it's more of an open world RPG come survival game, but it's too good for me not to put in, and I wanted to put it in. It's my list, so I did. It's a parkour based um, RPG first person shooter hybrid, and it includes, I think, all the DLCs. People often ask about that, and yeah, they're all here. Now they had a few, a few issues, there were some issues with frame rate at launch but they've patched that so it's now locked out at 30 and it's a terrifying game at times it's brilliant online but again they had a few issues with that at launch i don't know there was a patch i think like two or three days ago that hopefully was supposed to iron out some of the online um, matchmaking issues i've never had a problem matching up with one friend but if you want to match up with like three friends it was always a bit iffy and sometimes it would crash but with that said even just with one mate or on solo and joining people online it's so much fun this is i actually want to go and play this one now you could spend hundreds of hours in this and with all that dlc as well it, it represents excellent value for money it carries a reasonably sizable 15.8 gigabyte download Then we have the Bioshock Trilogy. It's Bioshock 1, 2, and 3. Three, obviously known as Bioshock Infinite. Now, the first two games were set under the sea in a lovely little town called Rapture. It's not lovely at all. It's filled by it's filled with absolute psychopaths. Now, I found it a bit odd that these didn't have gyro aiming. I thought that was a real missed opportunity, especially seen as they um, purposely implemented it in Borderlands, which launched at the same time. Didn't make much sense to me at all. And it's a bit of a shame they haven't put that in because I find it helpful. But regardless, you're looking at very solid port really nice smooth performance good frame pacing um, and infinite was set in the clouds in a lovely floating city which was called Columbia I think in that one you play as Booker DeWitt and it also included the burial at sea episodes one and two I don't know about you but I feel like we well not we but I feel like developers have kind of lost their way a bit we had so many awesome games back in the day like you look at the, even at the last maybe two generations ago it feels like since then I can't name many in the last maybe year or two first person shooters that have really been game changing i mean maybe i'm a bit stung by things like the new battlefield and but i, I look back at bioshock and that series and i think my word i mean i think they're probably making another one and that's great but glenn and i were chatting the other day and it just feels like it's you know it's remakes and re-releases it's where's the new stuff but there you go this one's 20 gigs for infinite and the rest are all about 20 gigs so make sure you've got a bit of space
Coming in at number two then, we have Doom Eternal. Now I guess you could argue that this isn't a remake, but it is just an extension, a continuation of a current series, and it's, it's a very good one, honestly. I really love the new Doom games. I think they're so fast-paced, but intentionally so. The mechanics are designed to force the player to keep moving, which I loved, and you can be a sliver of health and just get the hit that causes them to stagger, run over and just rip them in half. And they remind you you're playing a game when all those colorful pickups spew out of them and you pick them up and you're back in the game. It obviously uses the ID Tech 7 engine, which is running reasonably well on Switch. They included everything I love, gyro aiming, tweakable X and Y axis, sensitivities, just it's a decent port. They've put the time in and they've also included the two versus one battle mode, which can be a lot of fun. There are a number of DLCs you can pick up for this one already, including the Ancient Gods, which I've actually played. I was going to review that. I should have done really, shouldn't I? But it was decent. It was nothing standout, you know, it was a bit more vertical than this one. There was a lot more verticality in that you could kind of hook shot your way around, I guess you could say. But this is a 29 gigabyte game. So yeah, make sure your, uh, your switch isn't too bloated if you decide to pick this one up. Which takes us on to the number one spot. And for me this year, it's the Crisis Remastered Trilogy. I think Crytek have, wow, it's impressive how good this game looks and runs on the Switch. And I always appreciate a first person shooter that lets me adapt my play style. With the Crisis games, one thing they do really well is allowing the player to mix things up. I didn't say switch things up, I should have done. Ah. You can either go cloaked and slow and spend your time creeping around. And the third one specifically had that bow and arrow, which was awesome because you could stay cloaked with it. And you could pick up any any enemy's weapon you could pick an enemy up and throw them if you want or you can decide to go loud and rip a turret out and just run around like an absolute lunatic i can't stop my brain from saying cloak engaged but there it is yeah crisis remastered trilogy the second one ran really nicely and you'll be battling in the third against the alpha seth the trilogy has been dropped in price once down to 35 quid so it was a 20 percent drop and i should imagine maybe in the january sales we might see another drop but for free good games free excellent games it's it's really worth your money and as far as performance goes there's no no worries there we do have full performance reviews of these as well if you want to go check that out But everyone likes a surprise twist ending and I'm going to give you an alternate number one and it has to go to Hypercharge Unbox which has seen so many free updates since it's launched and also huge content changes that massively improve the game. What is it? Well, you remember Small Soldiers. It's essentially Small Soldiers, but a first person cooperative shooter. It also has an awesome mode, which resembles one of my favorites from Time Splitters 2. And I think it's known as Plague Mode. One of you is infected, the rest are desperately trying to survive. But like any good zombie film, when you get infected yourself, you then join in the hunt for the other normal players. Hypercharge Unbox is an excellent game. It's got lovely mechanics. It takes advantage of the switches, gyro controls, and it has lovely little touches as well, like leaving your toy box as you start the level. You'll see references to Toy Story and other famous films and the environments are constantly being improved. It's a very, very small development team. In one of the more recent free updates, they added bots as well so you don't need other people to play with, you can play completely offline. You'll unlock new skins, new toys and there are boss fights in here as well. They added in things like a health bar for the boss to improve that experience and if you're ancient like me, you'll see lots of the toys from your youth and absolutely deserves a joint play at the top of this list. So that's it for my list. Let me know in the comments. I guarantee you some of you will say, oh, you forgot Immortal Redneck or you forgot the original Doom or something. And that's absolutely cool. That's what we want. Leave it in the comments. Let us know the things that you enjoyed the most on Switch as far as first person shooters go. If you enjoyed the content, then do consider sticking around. And remember, if you want to save 10% on any of these games, at least up until the 24th of December, use code SWITCHUP over at our website. All the links to that will be in the description, I think. Thanks to our patrons, you guys are amazing and I think we just had a new one yesterday. Incredibly generous and yeah, awesome. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers guys. See ya!